Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Show and Show. And I've got an absolutely tremendous guest again here today. And this is actually my video editor. So when I get messages, probably more often than coaching requests, a bit of hyperbole there, but may, maybe maybe in, in and around about it, I get messages all the time off the back of the reels that I'm sharing, the long form videos I'm sharing on YouTube. You're literally watching one. And I get questions all the time as to what am I using to edit my videos? And I say, I'm not, I'm not using a, a thing. I'm using Liam O'Neill. Liam O'Neill is absolutely incredible. Funnily enough, the whole way in which we ended up working together was because Liam, just out of nowhere, this is a, a bit of a, a hack for any consultants here as well. He literally just took one of my videos that I put out there and re-edited it in his format, which was way better than anything I'd ever edited myself. I put it out there, it had tremendous reach, way bigger than any other video I'd shared in the last year. It had more post saves, more comments, uh, more inbound leads, and from there, the relationship started. So welcome, Mr. Liam O'Neill. Thank you so much for being here. I massively appreciate you. But I'd love you to share a quick snapshot of how you describe you. Who are you and who do you help and how do you help them? First of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on this side rather than just watching and editing as I go. Uh, so basically, the, the it's funny that you say the way that we ended up working together because all the editors that reach out to me and say, how do you get clients? That's exactly what I tell them to do. Like make something for somebody you want to work with and send it to them. And then if you're good enough, they'll hire you. Uh, so before... Before I started editing, I was a coach. So before everything changed in the world, I was a corporate speaker and a trainer and a coach. And on the side, I'd been doing my own videos for forever. Uh, since 2013, if you write back, you'll be able to see my first. I leave them all there because it shows the progression. But um, if you go back to 2013, you'll see that. And then I started working with different coaches on their programs and editing those on the side as well. And when the Alex Ramose style appeared, I was like, oh, I actually know how to do this. So maybe I should start making my own videos like that. Um, and then just made a video for yourself. And I think that's what makes me stand out as an editor compared to most editors is that when, when you send me a long form, I understand marketing. I understand all my clients. I understand where they're coming from. So I'm able to cut it um, better than somebody just watching it for the sake of watching it and trying to make a video. I understand what you're trying to get across and I can cut it that way. So um, I am an ex-coach. Well, I technically coach this now, I suppose. But I call myself an ex-coach that is now uh, editor and social media. I have been a manager at times, but I don't like it. <laughs> so social media director, that sounds better. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, no, di director, I, I would definitely say for sure. And, you know, like Liam's got such an incredible mind for... Uh, for marketing speak, right? So it's not just the fact that he can edit a video, but it's the fact that you actually have great insight and intuition into what is actually going to make a video work and also get somebody to reach out to that coach on the other side of the video. So much so that when I create a long form video such as a podcast or we take a video from one of our live events and I share it with you, you'll know, uh, but I'm sharing with the, the audience here, I don't ask Liam anymore to share with me the things that he's thinking of editing, right? Mm -hmm. So originally it was like, send me, send me over the clips and I'll choose the, the perfect ones and then you can edit them and the job will be done and amazing. But I realized that every single thing that you cherry picked was an absolute dynamite clip because you knew exactly what was going to grab people's attention in that first three seconds what was going to get them to be engaged right through to the end of the video you're always up to date with the stats of what's working and what's not working on different platforms for video content so you've got such a great insight and such a great intuition into what actually makes videos work so it's not just the fact that you edit them better than i've ever seen anybody edit them but simultaneously you also have that amazing intuition into what is actually going to make a video work and you help all of your clients with that, which is great. Even myself, like you'll, you'll say, you see for the next time that you do this type of video, adjust this lighting. Like you just told me before we came on here, <laughs> right? Yeah. Adjust this lighting, do this, do that. Like you're always thinking about video improvements, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, but that's going to bring me into making this a very practical session. So mm -hmm. of course we could go into 
into your background, I, I would love to do another episode where we actually talk about the many faces and masks of William <laughs> O'Neill. And we, we talk about your last like 20 years, um, which is very interesting, by the way. Just go and follow Liam videos for coaches on Instagram if you want to go back into his history and see everything that he, he used to do back in the day. Um, however, to make this very practical, if we're going to focus on two things here, like we want to make things better for coaches with their video creation. Video creation is top of mind in terms of social media for 95 to 98% of coaches, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Video creation is the thing that everybody wants to be able to do more of. They want to make it better. They know it is the, it, the format of content that right now is going to give them the highest probability of not just going viral and creating thousands of new followers, but simultaneously engaging somebody in a way in which they want to reach out to them and potentially become a coaching client. So if we say there's two sides of things, there's the planning and creation of the video. And then mm -hmm. the second side is taking that video and editing it in as quick a time as possible, making it absolutely incredible and getting it out there. If we focus on the first side here, planning your content and then creating it, what are two or three things that you see that coaches struggle with or get wrong that you could then give the antidote that could save them time and end up with better videos? The first thing that people get wrong is they make one video at a time and that becomes a handling. So they shoot the video, then they go and edit it, then they go and post it, and then they're like, right, I need to do another one for tomorrow. So I get everybody to batch record, but not only batch record, but before you batch record, you batch script. So there's a lot of people that will talk online saying, you don't need to script your videos. You don't need to once you're really good at it, but like I'm very old school. I like to write everything down in paper. And I have my book of scripts here. And in this... I did a challenge at the start of 2020. I did three videos a day for 88 days. So I tested, I tried to make each video one at a time, complete nightmare. Then I tried to do one day at a time and it was much easier. And then I thought if I just sat down for an hour and scripted a week, then after that script, then record it, then I could edit in my leisure. And then I realized if I just batch edit as well, then I'm finished for the week and I don't even have to think about any of it until it's till next week again so the first thing you want to do is come up with like 10 ideas and all i tell all the coaches that work with me the easiest way to do that is just think about the 10 conversation you had with clients like a pt is going to have had a client say every time i deadlift it hurts my back what should i do and you go well you need to either get stronger wear a belt stretch you need to get your technique right like there's 10 videos off that one question alone and then nutrition, like how do I eat on the run? Just Google how much calories is in a Big Mac and then go and tell them, if you eat a Big Mac, it's this many calories. Whereas if you go to the shop on your way home from work because you haven't had time to eat lunch, all these Snickers bars and Mars and everything that you eat, that's this many calories. And then you can just do breakdowns of calories. Like there's your, your videos again. So thinking about what your clients ask you about because what your clients ask you about is what your potential clients are going to be struggling with so then you don't need to sit at home and think like right i need to come up with 10 ideas if you love what you're doing or if you're just been doing it a long time you should just know it should be easy to come up with 10 ideas then i break those 10 ideas into three deliverables so it might be if it is a deadlift then i would say right make sure to warm up and the reason Get your technique right. And one of the things that people overlook, like pulling the shoulders back. And then the third is recovery time. Make sure you take two minutes between instead of jumping back in. That's it. That's your, that's your whole video there done. So then you, you just move on to the next one. You script it and you have it in your bullet points. So the way I have mine wrote, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it. Um, I'll put a screenshot of one up anyway. I just remembered I'm editing this. So I'll screenshot <laughs> the way I bullet point something. So I would have it like like that. This one here is um, just goals for the day that are non-negotiable. Get out in nature, exercise, uh, and get off social media at eleven thirty. So they are the only bullet points I have. So I'm not stuck in having to read a full page. I just go right, get out in nature, and immediately I know why. Like get out in nature because the sunlight and the oxygen just elevates your day. That's the end of that statement. Then I go on to the next one. So if you have it all scripted, you know exactly how long it's going to take you. Well, not exactly how long, but you have a fair idea of how long it's going to take you because you've scripted it. 
Each video will be about 30 seconds. So then when you look at your video, you go, oh, I have only 30 seconds to edit. Instead of when you decide, oh, I'll just chat about biceps. And then five minutes later, you finally got a reel. And then you look at the content and you're like, I have five minutes to go through to find myself. Like I used to do it <laughs> where before I studied all this and, and got into it, all of my videos had like different hand signals for myself that was like, this is where you need to restart. So then when I scrub through, if I see myself doing the John Cena, I'm like, right, delete that. If I see two <laughs> thumbs, I know to keep it. Whereas now when I bullet point, I have a 30 second video that I cut into like a 25, 20 second video. For for my clients, they all notice too that the more I feedback I give them, the shorter the videos are that they send me. And I end up with like, maximum a two minute video that i can turn into anywhere from a 30 to a one minute reel so ha having it scripted out in bulk then shoot in bulk so you only have to get into that flow zone once you set everything up like i have all my lights everything set shoot everything and then edit everything the next time even for like a week ahead of yourself start off with one video and whilst you're doing that as a wee bonus Every day, do a story. Eventually, whenever you join Neil's group, he'll tell you that some days you should skip a day in your stories. But every day, do a story because you just get to practice being on camera. You will notice within seven days, if you do a story every day, I'll challenge anybody to do it. Tag me in the stories and I'll watch them. But by day seven, you'll go, I notice that I now start. I don't have the millennial pause anymore where we press record hello, how's it going there? And then we start, you're like, you just start, you do it. And then by the end, I'm not even thinking, I just get out of the gym and I sit down and I go, just after finishing the hectic leg session, the first thing I'm going to do now is go home and get some protein. Watch your protein of choice. Boom, that's that's your story done. And then you realize, oh, 30 people loved the protein one and only 10 people loved when I talked about sleep. So my next reel is going to be focused on protein. My next week of reels will be protein related. So that, that would be the main thing I think people struggle with is they make they make a mountain out of every video they think about how much of a nightmare it is because most people hate editing like i we've talked about this loads i don't sell editing i sell time so you know that now that you can just record whatever you want send it to me and never think about it ever again and then it's posted uploaded and you're sorted whereas most people are thinking oh, i don't know if I, I normally i would curse if i was talking in person but the, I call it the, the effort strategy where they just get to the point where they're like, oh, fuck it, I need to do this. And then they just blurt out any other nonsense. And that's why their videos don't get in. They've no proper hook, no call to action, no like strategy or structure within the video. It's just nonsense. Because And, and like I've pointed out to people, like I'm pr pr pretty blunt with it. I'll say to them like, that video was complete nonsense. I bet you, you just decided, fuck, I need to do something today. And they're like, oh, how do you know? I'm like, just listen to it back. So put, putting your, like taking a Monday 12 to one is um, script. Use chat GDP if you could move all your scripting yourself and then just tidy it up into your words. And then Tuesday, I shoot all my thing within an hour. Wednesday, I start editing like this. So it's, it's simple it's simple it's it's simple but it's not easy i suppose would be the way of describing it yeah i i think that out of all the things that you said there the thing that coaches would be most reluctant around um and most likely not doing out of the three as you as you would imagine uh would be the scripting side of things for for sure um mm -hmm. and i know that that that's probably going to come down to one a lot of coaches won't have really thought about it they'll think more topic rather than script um second of all coaches um for the most part the, the most difficult thing in marketing in general is copywriting like it's the the most yeah. difficult thing to sure people can string sentences together but actually making words sell and be effective um mm. is the most difficult uh, skill for sure and um, which is why we template everything down to like daily content in the private coaching because it's a difficult skill and it's it's extremely important on the other side. Um, but what one thing sprung to mind there with with the scripting, which is I remember I now remember that I haven't thought about this since all the way back then. This must have been about ten years ago. I remember like really loving Tim Ferriss. 
back mm-hmm. then and um of course great writer four hour work week um he had like his daily emails which was absolutely huge um he had his podcast and everything and so i always looked at him as like a really really inspirational writer and he was asked what was the the best book that he's read around copywriting and it was a tiny book um i think it's quite an old one as well i could be wrong but i think it was called on writing well and the number one or the first tip that's inside there around copywriting is to write out whatever you want to write and then to instantly look at what can be removed so it's not about tweaking and making the words better it's about what can be removed and you as a video editor and i know this is this is something that you focus on is what can be removed from the video that could lose interest and lose attention so have you got anything that you would suggest around around scripting it might be that specific strategy it might be other things there that can help a coach with scripting as well as chat gpt <laughs> maybe you could even say what to throw into chat gpt um to to get a, a script that would be accurate for them before chat GDP existed i used to do a thing called the, the eight-year-old so i used to teach people how to um go into corporate and and sell and negotiate and everything And I would get them to write out their plan. So even if you were going for an interview and you wanted to write out the answers to your questions, and I would say, read it like an eight-year-old would be reading to their parents, something they're really proud of. And this might sound terrible, but when you do it, so I would literally write my script and then I would read it like this. Journal, I said, three nons a day. This way I always achieve something in my day. And then my brain goes, you just repeated yourself. You know what I mean? So, so it, hearing it out loud is good. But if I just read that normally out loud, journalists said a three non-negotiables a day, the way I always achieve something in my day. Yeah, that's good. It's not the same. Reading it like I'm yeah. an eight-year-old, reading it to my parents, really, it's a it's a different mindset when you do it. But now ChatGDP exists, you don't have to do that. I advise everyone doing that anyway because it's always fun. But ChatGDP, so I will put a prompt in so... Say if I, I'm making a video for yourself, a script for yourself, as an example, then I would put a prompt in and the prompt would be something along the lines of uh, give me five hooks for selling a free online challenge for mark for marketing uh, directed at coaches. And then they'll give me it and then I'll say, right, write me three bullet points that are really important to talk about in this subject. And I just keep breaking it down like that until I have this script out out, i'll say at the very end now take everything that you've just given me and put it into a 30 second script for a reel once it's done that i then will say at the bottom my next prompt will be now rewrite that as an eight-year-old reading um reading level massively changes the like the look of it the the words that you just because you use them all the time they're just normal to you and then when you say put this in as eight, because uh, most people online read it in eight grade, like and from all research is around about an eight grade reading level. So there's no point you being super fancy. Like when we ca- count about when we talk about calorie deficit as an example, there's lots of people that go, "What is that? What is what is he talking about? I, I've heard calories before. What is a deficit?" But whenever you say calorie deficit, as in not eating as much as you are now you're you're speaking to both people but if you speak to both you end up turning off both so if i know my audience is on it uneducated in the system that i'm talking about then i'll go with the eighth grade reading level because they're more likely to get educated then if the people get into it and they want to be more educated that's when they come into your program so that's when they go to your long form as well but um the going into chat gdp and using that but but scripting yourself out and reading it reading it like the eight-year-old will teach you two things one it's easy to talk out loud like it's funny when most of the clients i talk to most of the coaches that reach out to me don't script hate scripting and then i'll say why do you not do videos and the the, four out of five will come back with i don't want to look stupid or i don't want to be called out and my information not being correct i'm like if you scripted that would fix both those problems immediately you can if you say something you can research it to make sure it's correct 
And if you script it, you're not going to sound stupid because you've got a script there. And then coming back to the editing, even if you do do something stupid, you can just edit that wee bit out and then start again and you're fine. Um, like you'll have seen, you've done it and other clients have done it. In the middle of your video, you'll say something to me, Liam, see when I said that, can you take that wee bit out and fix this bit? And then you just go on with what you're doing. Those of clients will do that. Like they'll say, go and stick a Santa hat on me for this. And I'll be thinking, just buy a Santa hat. <laughs> So much easier <laughs> to make the script an easier one is just practice based on what you already know and then read it out loud like when i did stage talks i would have walked about my house for hours the week before doing my whole routine like i did a tedx talk i was the only person on the stage without a single note and in that tedx talk i get kicked in the balls i break a chapstick with my throat and i do a mind reading routine to the audience so there was a lot of different elements going on in that one area but when i was asked oh did you just do that off the fly i'm like no i scripted it out perfect word for word and then i recited word for word the entire script um it just makes everything flow much easier once you get into it so try both the eight-year-olds do it out loud and then put it into chat gdp and ask them to turn this into an eight-year-old or hire me and i'll just get all your scripts for you <laughs> you can just <laughs> read them Brilliant. absolutely class happy days right so that's the first side of things so that's the the planning and the video creation now they've got 10 videos on their phone now they're a minute and a half long they need to make them below one minute and they need to make them all the bells and whistles that make your incredible videos your incredible videos what are some of the steps that they are taking now to drastically reduce the editing time, but also have a much higher quality video. So the first thing that you wanna do is cut out all of the dead air and all of the ums, as, and repeats that aren't needed. Some of them will look very sharp and, and you'll think, oh, I can't cut that because it's just a word. Like I said, doo-doo earlier. I, if I was, if I was uh, doing something comical, I would put a wee poop emoji. But if I was trying to be serious, I would take out doo-doo. I would just take out the do and move on. But it's very close. So initially when you're doing it, you keep it in because you're like, oh, that's going to look a wee bit weird. But initially we don't care what it looks like. We just want to get, we want to get everything out. So you take that minute and a half video and you go, right, I have 58 seconds of video to work with. We want to try to get below 60 seconds. Otherwise it doesn't become a YouTube short anymore. So you want you look at that and you go, right, now I know I have 58 seconds to work with. I like to do that because it gives me an end. Whereas if you do everything as you go, you never know when you're going to actually end it. Whereas I know that this video is 58 seconds. I'm moving closer to the end. So even as someone who loves editing, I still want to know when it's going to be over so I can get into the next one. Um, <laughs> so once you do that, then... The two basic techniques I teach first are jump cuts and zoom cuts. And they are, a jump cut is basically, and once you cut between, you will go from one to the other. So you'll, if you're watching on, on YouTube now, you'll see it go from me to Neil and then back to both of us. And then back to you, now I have to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a jump cut. It just goes from one scene to the next. So that will hide whatever I'm, if I make a mistake, that'll hide the cut. When you're doing a talk and head video like this, you just jump cut and stretch the, so if I'm in this position, then I just stretch a wee bit closer and then back. So you're just stretching out the video. That means that you could have said something, took a whole break, took a glass of water, settled yourself and then started again. But that jump cut will completely cover that. Once you learn a jump cut, it's the simplest thing to do in editing. Once you learn that, it takes the, it takes the pressure off of getting everything right. You can completely mess everything yeah. up repeatedly. You don't have to worry about anything because you can just fix it with a jump cut. Then we use zoom in and out because one, it makes the video feel slightly different than just constant jump cutting. But if I'm making a point and as I talk about the point, I come closer to the camera, it seems like this is important. And then if I settle back again, now you're getting the time to like think about what I just talked about and answer the question that I've asked or whatever it is that actually was the, the point of it. So those cut out everything you don't need so you know how long the video is actually gonna be. 
then do the jump cuts and all to tidy it all up. Then the next thing I will do is captions. So with CapCut, you can just do auto captions. And now if you buy the Pro, I think it's about 60 or 70 pound or dollars. It's very cheap a year. Um, they have now really good, like the, the captions are amazing anyway. The, the, the AI is so sharp at picking up. Like I work with some people and they speak incredibly fast. Even if you think I am, even for my ear, I'm like, that is crazy fast. The AI will pick it up. And then I go through and make sure it's all spelled correct and make sure it's actually saying the words that the person's saying. Then you can just pick the auto captions. There's so many. Remember whenever the purple border came out and everybody was like, this is the best thing ever. It was just a purple border that followed every word. That was like, when that first came out, that blew my mind because I had spent hours on people's videos making that myself individually it was a nightmare and it took eight you had to make the box move it for each word now you just press a button and it does it for you so there's probably people listening to this that haven't properly made videos for ages because it was a nightmare and now if they started they would look at cap cut and go all right three buttons and i've done what used to take me a whole week to do so you do the captions and you make sure they're in the right place um I have a, a thing that you can, if you reach out to me, I'll send it to you. It's just a wee border protector that you just overlay over your video and it shows you where you can put your captions that aren't going to be covered by all of the like and subscribe and all that stuff that be's in the corner or the the um, comment below or anything like that. So it's really useful. So it keeps everything. There's no point having captions if nobody can read them. Um, so once you do your captions, then I look for words that pop out to me if they pop out to me they're going to pop out to other people and i add like an emoji or an image or something you can't like you if you watch go back and watch some of these you'll see like i've dressed you up as a santa at some point i've made you a chef so i just think of if neil's talking about himself but it's relevant like clown. he's talking about you i made you a clown that's right <laughs> when my wife saw that he was like what is this <laughs> I just remember my favorite one is when I when I put your head on the rock's body. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the rock. Um but they stand out more than just a picture of you giving a thumbs up. Like the mm -hmm. pictures I use of myself or me like dabbing or me doing something or holding a sword or something. Something that stands out. So it's not just look, here's a picture of me whilst I'm already talking. It's like you're talking about people being clowns, so I dress you up and I put you in a clown hat and had a spinning plate and something else probably like that stands out more and it's humorous because like and because i've got to know you over the years i know you won't be insulted by that because you are very likable and open so so then when people watch that they're not thinking god he's very serious now they come on a video and then you're chilled and nice and easy to speak to it throws people whereas when they see you having a bit of crack where you're like the rock or or you're a clown or a chef or whatever they know, right, this guy doesn't take himself too seriously. He's, I'll be able to chat to this person. So I, I pick out the words or the statements that um, pop out at me. So I actually, most people will watch the video through and then if it pops out in their ear, first thing I do is I read it. Whatever pops out if I'm reading, I put an emoji and then I watch it through for what did I miss when I was reading. And the reason that, that there's two different things is you might emphasize a word that I didn't emphasize when I read it. So then I go, right, this is an important word for him. So I will use that. Uh, and then then once you've got your emojis and stuff on, you just add the sound effects to make them. There's a ma It's so weird, but there's a massive difference between an emoji popping up on a screen and an emoji popping up with a pop sound, like coming with it. It just makes it stand. I was going to say makes it pop that bit more, but too many pops. But it makes it stand out that little bit more. Um, and then the final thing I do after I've done that, and if I need music or anything, I'll, I'll do that. The final thing I do is I watch it in half speed and make sure that everything's in sync. And sometimes it's funny because I, I could be doing a video, one of your videos and then I jump on the Q&A with you. And you're talking in normal speed and I've been listening to you in ha for the last half hour <laughs> in half speed. <laughs> it takes a while for my brain to register back on you. 
Um, but I didn't have to be just because because of all the psychology training that I've had. When we're watching something, if the sound effect is slightly off, the emoji popping up, our subconscious will go, oh, something wasn't right there. So like, you know, whenever you walk into a bar and it's just a bad bar and you're like, hmm, I don't think we should be in here. If you said that to your wife, I don't, I think we should leave. Your wife would go, why? And you'd go, don't know. But I think we should. But your subconscious, scan, Jason Bourne's the room, it sees everything and it goes, nah, this isn't for us. We need to get out of here. Um, so the same thing will happen when people are watching your videos. And, and like back to what you were saying er- earlier, like taking out the, what can be taken out? I might watch that and go, actually now in slow-mo that that emoji doesn't fit i'll move it or i'll change the emoji or i'll have to re-sync it slightly because it didn't sync up the first time and then that's your video but that that's super overkill like that's someone's paying me to do it if you just did the first bit cut all the stuff you don't need jump cuts zoom in and out and then put on your just normal captions that they have up which just filter through just just the standard a wee bit that would massively improve your video without doing anything else absolutely class and um so you're saying cap cut is the thing to go to to simplify the process for the system right um what what's your what's your perspective of free versus paid in terms of cap cut and is it difficult to use easy to use what, what's the score with it? So the free version is what I actually teach people to use. You can do everything I said on the free version. It just takes a wee bit more time to make captions stand out. The paid version, you just press a button and it's, the captions will stand out. So that's the, uh, if we're selling time here, we want to save time. You can do it all. And I think it's worth learning. Like learning how to do all this means that if you ever do outsource, for example, Imagine if you outsourced to me and you didn't have a clue and I was a rogue and I just said, well, this video is going to take 14 days and I charge you a million pound. You'd be able to go, no, you just need to do this, this and this. I've done it myself for ages. So just do that. So nobody can catch you out. Same as learning about marketing. You can't be then caught out by a marketing agency when they tell you all the stuff about the ads and you go, no, the Shoney 255s. Yeah. What are you talking about? That's easy. Do that. Everybody look that up. Um, whenever so that the free version will do everything it'll speed up time you'll do your auto captions everything it's just a wee bit of time to then tidy up the captions um the pro version has an ai thing that's actually got much better since they've started where it'll cut out all the filler words for you so it'll do that wee bit of editing first then you just need to tweak a few wee bits anyway um most of the people that have bought the course and went through it have zero editing like proper like they've done we cuts together on video leap or just get it done and get it out whereas like a lot of them will tell me they're technophobes and they don't know what to do so this the course is so step by step that you just as long as you just follow the steps but the bonus is you get into my group anyway so my group will but if you're not buying the course the the thing will do it It'll do it for you anyway. Uh, if you look on, on my YouTube channel, it'll teach you how to do jump cuts and how to do zoom in and all anyway. Like all of this can be learned for free by yourself. It's just the reason the course exists is it's in a straight line. It's linear. You can, it's just yeah. speed again. We're back to speed. And then you get into the into the private group where you can ask me about anything that's going on. So from my experience, even complete, like remember one of the girls, said she was a technophobe hadn't made a video ever and the first video she made got 13k views in like two days off the back of following through just step by step so it's very it's very easy to use like i also use premiere pro because it's a lot more technical and and i can do a lot more technical things in it but i'm professional and so i need to whereas like most people don't like even I've had clients reach out to me and they'll say, I've seen you did this in your video with the paper background and the fancy thing and all this going on. And I'm like, if you want to spend an hour making your video, then I I, I can show you how to do it. And they're like, but no, I want to do it fast. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, then you, can't, you can't have both, but you can massively elevate your game and stand out just by using the free basic CapCut version. 
and they actually Capcode actually has an affiliate thing. I'm not connected to it in any way, but if you get somebody to join it, you'll get a free month off the pro. So just get 12 people and you've got your year, oh, but it's only 70 quid anyway or something, 60, 70 quid, something like that. That's an absolute steal. Um, and I, I know that, well, I, I won't say the exact number because I don't know if, if this is going to change <laughs> change on your side um, whenever somebody watches this, if they watch this in like uh, 15 months' time or something. Um, however, like Lee, Liam's course that he has for for editing videos, like probably probably at least a quarter of our masterminders have, have used it, uh, which is absolutely amazing and it's completely changed mm-hmm. the game for them in terms of the time saved around video editing, the quality of the videos that are going out there, the the follower count that they've got, the inbound leads that they've got. It, it's a complete game changer. And the funny thing is, is that most people, because they're kind of conditioned with it now, will probably think that this is going to be like 1500 bucks or 2K yeah. or something like that. But you get, give them a snapshot of what you're actually selling this course for. Never mind the fact that you give them personalized video feedback inside a group. They're <laughs> going to think it's ridiculous. So the second part of this statement, I don't even know if you know it. The first, the video course costs £49, which is ridiculous. But I, I'm, I had so many coaches that were my friends that were struggling that I was like, I, I, I don't have the time to help everybody, but I can create a course. So I created a course. And that, that's why it's that. Then we came up with the idea of doing the group because people kept messaging me with follow ups. Now that I can do this, how do I do this or how do I improve it? Um, so I came up with the group and the group is you get in for 30 days for free. And then after the 30 days, it's £99 a year. But I don't, I haven't charged anyone 99 pound. I just couldn't, I just hadn't the time to set up the pricing and the emails and the 30 days passed. And I just thought, I don't care if they're in here and they're all growing and we're getting good views. I, I'm happy to be here. And I do lives in the group all the time. So probably leaving money on the table <laughs> there. But um, I, I, it's yeah. my old, old coaching. I just love helping people. And if they can come in, and someone sends me a, sends me a video and it's got like a thousand views and they say, what would you have done different? And I give them three ideas and the next video, pretty much exactly the same, gets 15,000 views. Like, I, I love that. And then when they come back and they're like, you know, off that video, I actually got like leads and, and clients off there. And you're like, yeah. So rather than hunting people down for a hundred quid at the end of 30 days, I've just left everybody. <laughs> in the group so far so anyone that just comes in i just leave them there um and we do a q a every monday and i'm just i'm there every day like i i set a challenge to do one story a day for the next seven days and anyone that's doing it i'm going in and looking at their story and then just send them a wee message like you've done this today and you said that tomorrow can you add in a poll and say this like just and they're noticing already it's only been since monday and they're already noticing that Actually, I'm getting more views here on across the board because they're interacting with a plan rather than just, I need to do something. I haven't done anything for ages. So I wasn't sure if you knew that I haven't been charging anybody for staying in the group, but that's... I didn't know that, but <laughs> that, 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 that's classic you. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> hey, um, especially if you're listening to this when uh, when this originally goes out, like snap it up <laughs> the, yeah. like at, at, at that price for for the course it's it's absolutely bonkers um never mind the fact that there's any support and then never mind the fact that you're forgetting or choosing to charge people um after the 30 days it's you know yeah it's, it's I'm, I'm sorting all that out I'll, but by the end of by the start of 2024 in my new game plan that you sent me that'll be part of it and i'll have it all up and running and automated it's the automate i just didn't get around to doing the automation and then the time passed and i was like whoops oh, and then there's like yeah people were progressing and enjoying what they were doing so like right, we'll just leave it <laughs> if you're enjoying it you're making tons of impact on a lot of people right now through through this course and of course your business as a whole it it works really well because of course you, you make profit from the 
uh, from from the course anyway, albeit that it's low cost, but it's a feeder for your one to one mm -hmm. stuff, your done done for you stuff, the type of stuff that that we do, and those bigger chunkier jobs together as well. So, um, so it makes sense if anybody's listening and they're going, why why is Neil suggested <laughs> that the only thing he does is sell a forty nine pound course that has lifetime access and that he has to give them video feedback every day for three hundred and sixty five days. That wasn't my suggestion. <laughs> that, yeah. That's because that's because Liam just loves to help people and um, and he really enjoys the process. But uh, th this has been absolutely tremendous. Absolutely loved it. What I'll do is below this episode. Um, I mean, you're you're literally editing, so you can help <laughs> drop drop down below a link to first of all discover you on on Instagram if anybody wants to reach out to you, see your videos, see your content, and things of that nature. But second of all, if you could also drop down below a link for people to go through and purchase, there's no affiliate. I don't take a penny from anything that, that comes through that link. Um, but I just know the impact of this because tons of our masterminders literally use the course and it's been a complete game changer for saving time, uh, having amazing videos and of course the results that come on the other side of having that higher quality video, more reach, more comments, more post saves, more inbound leads all of those things. So a big, massive thank you to you, man. I really, really appreciate you for not just being here, but just being an amazing person, being an amazing client, being amazing inside the group with all of our clients. And of course, everything that you do inside my business now with all of our video, I massively appreciate all of it. So thank you so much for being here, man. Just appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. And before we go, I'm just going to add in the fact that I did not have a business a year ago, just over a year ago. I didn't have this, but this business did not exist. And off the back of you, suggesting why don't you do this and then building everything so anyone that is listening is thinking why like we've worked so so close together because you've literally created this and i was when i was in the corporate world and doing everything i was doing i was doing pretty well i was well known and i earned well but now with the structure that you've given me even the like imagine if i had to follow it properly and charge people for the year even with a structure, like there's 95 people in my group. <laughs> with the structure that I did follow and the advice, like I have a business that is better than any business I've ever had with far less stress, far less worry and has no cap. I know it. Like if we have an interview, if we do another one of these in a year, like it'll just be mental where, where I, where I have the potential for where this can go with the knowledge that you have given and continue to offer. Uh, so anyone that is thinking about how the fuck did Liam become an editor man from being a corporate speaker guy, uh, reach out to Neil. He does loads of stuff for everyone. He's happy to speak in the DMS. He does challenges. He has courses like, get on it. I tell everybody to get on everything that you do ever. So this is another opportunity. <laughs> so just ruined your lovely outro, but thank you very much. <laughs> no, well, no it, was, it was a nice outro. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate you. And um, yeah, we'll definitely do this in a, in a year's time and um, pick up what's working then, but also check in with uh, with where you are in your business as well.